we have learned the concept of electric force, electric field, electric field intensity, and today we are going to learn the concept of capacitors and capacitance. So without wasting time, let us see what a capacitor is all about. The structure of a capacitor is what you are looking at. Diagrammatic representation of what a capacitor is all about is this. These, these are two plates, positive, positively charged plates and the negatively charged plates separated by a small amount of distance represented by the letter D. That's what is this. Now, the material in between the two plates is known as dielectric substance or insulator. It's known as dielectric substance or insulator. We are going to learn the function of this dielectric substance or insulator and what it does here. Also, this represents the connecting wires to a particular source charging the two plates. Okay? Now, this is the symbol that represents the two metal plates. This is a plate, a positively charged plate. This is also a negatively charged plate. So, these two bars represent the two metal plates. But something we must take note of is the two metal bars are of equal size and length. We must not mistake this for the two bars of a cell which one is uh, longer than the other. So we must take note of that. We know that a cell is represented as this. We must take note that this this bar is longer than this. That's the symbol of a cell. So we shouldn't mistake it for this at all. Okay, so having said that, let me clean it off. We don't need this. Okay, so the next thing we need to understand is this. The structure here has to do with something very, very important. Two conducting metal plates. These two conducting metal plates are what I have explained already, as you can see. The next one is dielectric substance or insulator. That is this. And then distance D separating the two plates. D. That is it. If we understand this simple concept, the structure, that means we will be able to understand how this functions. Now quickly without wasting time, why do we not have dielectric substance in between the two plates why do we have it it's simply because the dielectric substance enables the capacitor to function very well with regard to its capacitance therefore it increases the capacitance of the capacitor when you have an effective dielectric substance meshed between the two plates that's what happens here then the other thing is that if we increases the distance between the two plates the capacitance of the capacitor is affected will be reduced or decreased that is it also we take note of the cross-sectional area of the two plates the cross-sectional area of the two plates the, the larger the cross-sectional area of the two plates the bigger or the larger the capacitance of the capacitor the smaller the cross-sectional area of the plates, the smaller the capacitance of the capacitor. It's just vice versa, okay? Alright, so, having understood that, before I continue, subscribe. Come on, subscribe. <laughs> Give me some thumbs up. Come on, encourage me. Put on the bell button for constant notification, right? And share with your friends, networks, and students. Share with parents that are interested in learning concepts in science. All right, having said that, thank you very much for your patience and for watching up to this moment. But I will encourage you to stay to the end so that you understand the remaining parts of these uh, capacitors and then capacitance. Now, we have understood the structure. Let's do a definition. Let's 
look at the definition of what a capacitor is all about. A capacitor is an electronic component. Electronic component. <laughs> That's interesting. That stores electric charge in its electric field. That's what it means. It stores electric charge in its electric field. And it is because of this why it is included into the topic electric force, electric field, and the electric field intensity as we discussed before. So, because it stores charge in its electric field, and that's why we are discussing this under the topic electric force or electric field. Okay? And what happens? It has a symbol we say. Two conducting plates are of opposite charges. Q, positive Q, that is positive charge and negative charge respectively, separated by a certain amount of distance, D, as I earlier said. Good. If we have understood up to that point, we should also take into consideration what I said about the dielectric substance. The dielectric substance increases the capacitance of a capacitor. That's what it does. So it's very, very important when you have to click this way and the dielectric substance is there. It helps, it improves or increases the capacitance of a capacitor. I'm talking about the dielectric substance or insulator. If that is the case, we also have some amount of capacitance and the units. So the capacitance of a capacitor, what does it mean? It means the measure, a measure of its strength. The measure of what? Its strength in storing electric charge. If we want to consider the strength of a capacitor in storing, in storing an electric charge, we consider its capacitance. And that means this, what we are saying, that is a measure of its strength in storing electric charge in its electric field. We must always know that. We can also define it as the ratio of the charge to the potential difference. That is this. The amount of charge being stored and the potential difference across that charge. That is it. So this is valid. This equation is valid. We can number it as our exteris. So away from that, we have the unit of the capacitance as the farad. But there are also other subunits, such as one microfarad. This is micro. One microfarad is equal to 10 raised to the power minus 6 farad. And it's represented this way. Mu f. One picofarad is equal to 10 raised to the power minus 12 and is represented pf. And so on and so forth. By the time we understand all these things, we are non familiar with the simple foundational aspects of what a capacitor is all about and how its, cap its capacitance functions. Now, having said that, we also need to know the factors upon which the capacitance of a capacitor depends. And there are four factors. There are four factors. One is the shape of the capacitor. The second one is the distance between the two plates. And the third one is the nature of the dielectric substance separating the two plates. The fourth one is the size, how big or how small the capacitor is. All these four factors determine the effectiveness of the capacitance of a capacitor. I will stop at this point and then thank you for having patience and watching up to this moment. If I let you go, subscribe. Put on the bell button for notification. Thumbs up, come on. And then share with your friends, networks, and students. I am signing out right away. See you in my next video where I will be solving series parallel arrangement of capacitors and applications of capacitors or capacitance. Somewhere there or somewhere there. Thank you.